Welcome to Adventures Begin. Um, today we're going to put a power switch on our battery. The reason for that is there are devices inside of the RV that are on all the time. As an example of that, that would be the uh, propane uh, sensor. Uh, it has an alarm in it and that one is on all the time. It's, it's the law. So it's connected directly to the battery. If you don't want your battery to die when you have your uh, RV in storage, at least die quickly, then uh, I would, uh, I need some way to turn off, turn off the power and this is it. This device uh, it is pretty simple. It's just a knife switch inside of it and um, this is off and this is on. When it's on, these things are connected together. Basically inside of this is what we call a knife switch. Basically you pull the lever down and sort of a knife goes into a into a uh, two bar section. So this is rated at 300 amps. We're not going to get anywhere near 300 amps. Uh, but it's important to know that when we work on the RV, we have to make sure of two things. Number one, the battery is connected to work on this. And also the shore power is removed because when shore power is connected, it's charging your battery. And even though you disconnect the battery, you still have power on that. So I'm gonna disconnect our shore power and then we'll get on with the work that we're doing. Okay, so now I need to find a place to mount the switch. So I think I'm going to mount the switch here. Um, I have the red wire coming out of the battery going to this strip here and also the white wire the other side going to another strip so I have both positive and negative of the battery there's no inverter here no solar system yet no uh, other parts so the only thing that is here in the front of the RV is 12 volts so the first step that I have to take is I'm going to remove this battery connection here and then of course I'm going to have to make a new cable that will go from from here to here and that that will be our next steps so I'll remove this battery connection You can see that this battery connection is fairly good size. In fact, it looks like it might fit, fit the, it does, look at that, that's good. So this, this cable here is already ready to be used to go into this. And so now I need a new cable that goes from a 3 8 inch uh, lug to a 3 8 inch lug. One more thing to talk about is this is six gauge wire and since it's six gauge wire, I want to make sure that the other piece that I'm adding is six gauge wire. So I'm gonna make a six gauge wire that has three eighths lug on both ends. And if this goes here, I need at least one foot of six gauge wire to get from here to here. And that's actually not very expensive. It's about a dollar a foot, so it's not a big deal, okay? Okay, so we're going to strip it off far enough that I can put the lug on. And then we'll put the lug inside of this. And we're gonna actually put the lug in upside down. The way this works is this creates um, sort of a, w, a U shape uh, when it does the crimping and that uh, shape I believe gives us the best contact what we call a cold joint so then you basically just put this in the slot put this down and then you take your sludge hammer and you whack the heck out of this okay you take your sledge hammer and you give it one big hard whack and then you're all done okay just kidding, you don't use a sledgehammer, you just use a regular hammer. So let's uh, try to crimp on our, our first fitting. So 
we get this lined up. Want to get it right in the middle of the lug. And then we're going to hammer it. We want to give it pretty strong hammers. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, that is not coming off. Okay, now the second one. Okay, we get the second one in there. Get it lined up properly. And we're ready to go. Okay. Three. That ain't coming off. Okay, so now I'm gonna mount the switch. Um, the box that this is going to go on now th th this could be mounted inside the bulkhead if you'd like uh, so uh, it has many ways it can be mounted but I'm going to use the uh, mounting uh, bracket that they have here and notice that they've got it open here now you can snap off these sides if you want the bat wires to go to the side but I'm fine with it going down uh, to the bottom now when I put this on here I don't want to cover any of the uh, warning symbols that are on the RV so we're probably going to put it right here looks like a good place to mount it when I'm going to mount it to this which is uh, which is a steel sheet so I'm going to use uh, metal screws that uh, will do the uh, will drill basically into the metal so that's what I'm going to use so when you screw this to the to the panel, you want to use um, 10 by 3 quarter inch screws. Maybe if you need them longer, get them longer or whatever, but basically 10 is the largest size that will fit into this hole. So I can remove the. <laughs> That's gonna be hard. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, guys! Oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> that sucker's tight! I got that one loose. Let's see if I can get that one. There. Okay. Woo! That was surprising. Didn't expect that. Okay. So I'm ready to bring this routed this wire here bring this up into the switch now the interesting part about the switch is the switch says that there's an input and an output which is somewhat odd to me uh, I'm assuming that the input is where the the knife blade is and so the output uh, is where the blade goes into the, the two uh, fittings um, I don't think it really matters. The reality here is this is made for 300 amps and man, we're not going to be doing anywhere close to 300 amps, but I will follow 
what they say and someone will beep and get that in the video uh, follow what they say and uh, put this which goes to the RV on the output and then put my new wire from the battery onto the input speed it up or whatever. Okay, this is the output side. cable on the input side then we have to make sure that these wires kind of go towards here because we're going to be sticking it onto the mount so they can't just go straight down they have to be uh, inward. Okay. in the off position. We bring this over here to our battery. And I want this to there we go. Take up a little service loop. Careful where your wrench touches. This is positive. You touch the grounding of your vehicle, and you're going to see sparks. Okay, let's see if it actually works. Okay, so the expectation now is that when I turn the switch on, the RV, which is now connected to shore power again, will be able to charge this battery. And to tell the difference is. We're going to be a little less than 12 volts on the battery. Flip the switch, we should go to 13 and a half volts. And there it goes, about 13 and a half volts. So it's now charging the battery. Okay, so now we have a successful installation. It's on, we have power coming to our battery. And now we can close it up. We're all done. When we have a need, we could just come over here and switch it off now. Okay, so here's the tools that we're going to use. The first thing is how you're going to crimp your device. Now, a regular crimper you get in the store is not going to crimp it crimped 6 gauge and 0 gauge. So this is uh, what I use. To use this, you need a hammer to uh, do the crimping process. And then also you need something to strip the wires off of the, or strip the uh, insulation off of the wires. To take the uh, nuts off of the battery and off of the switch, you need a crescent wrench. Probably don't need one this big. Eight inches probably fine. A multimeter so that you can measure voltages. A drill with a Phillips head screw, because we're gonna be screwing the 
number 10 three quarter inch uh, metal screws into the bulkhead. You'll need it to be fairly long because if you have a short one, it won't reach inside of that power switch. Okay, and a drill, and that's what you need.